everyone, this is Joe, V1BWV. What we're looking at this morning is the uh, UBIT-X transceiver and some Nexium display add-ons. In this case, uh, we're using KD8CEC, Dr. Ian Lee's uh, firmware, uh, version 1095, which supports the Nexium displays and also dual functions. Now let's have a quick look here down below. I'll use a stylus to keep my fingers out of the way as much as possible. This is an old Radio Shack uh, scanner case and uh, I just converted it over. From the left here we have band up and down, we have single sideband, SDR functions, VFO A and B, uh, volume, RF gain, and your main VFO control. What you have here is a 3.2 uh, enhanced version and the enhanced version and extra menus and that sort of stuff that you're seeing uh, on these ones are uh, done by myself and um, KN4UD, Alan. So we kind of work together as a team and, and add features that we'd like to have it on and kind of make it look a little bit uh, more attractive, I guess. Anyway, so that's the 3.2. That's the 7, um, seven inch. Basically same features. Uh, they're running both same frequencies. I'll move the VFO down here. And you'll see this is moving back and forth. And you see that's moving at the same time. Virtually no lag at all. Uh, it's just as fast as you turn it, it, it appears. So let's have a quick look at the top here. I'll get up a little bit closer so you can see it. Um, this stops the capability of transmitting. Turn it on. VFO A, VFO B, band up, band down, uh, USB, and that's where you choose USB lower sideband, etc. You can lock the display, and this is for SDR if you use the SDR function. Um, self explanatory your dials, down here is your split, your RIT, your IF split, your attenuation. With your IF split off and on, you see there's something gone there at the bottom. Uh, this is variable. You can do this by hand. And what you're doing is tune to a portion of your bandwidth, um, lower or higher, depending on what sound you like to hear and that sort of stuff. Or even possibly to block, uh, block out someone that might be fairly close to you. You have attenuation, works the same way if I turn that on. Uh, you can move it up or down. Sorry, left or right uh, to attenuate the signal. Um, some new add-ons here is the um, the step. Different ways of doing the step, but I put the step. We put some step button in here. Um, so there you see it. This the step. I just choose what I want to choose, and she'll go to the 50, and then she'll disappear. And you can see the 50 appeared here. And at the same time, there's the 50 down below. Uh, there's no split buttons here. So what I do here, uh, what you do here basically, you, it's right on top of the Hertz uh, step area, it comes up. And then, so if I choose here, say 500, uh, you see the split there, and now you'll notice that, sorry for the movement, but it's the only way you kind of go back and forth to get a good look. You see that's gone to 500. So they're synced. Um, this here has a menu, which you can bring up sub-menu. And you can do the same on the other one, but it doesn't have the enhanced graphics. Uh, we'll put them on eventually. These are sliders that so you can dim the display, increase the display. One at the top is for temporary. As soon as you turn the power off, it would go back to the normal setting of this. This is the standard display for uh, setting the, um, uh, the brightness, but you want it to be on even after you turn the rig off and on. You want it to maintain that particular level. So one's kind of a on the fly, temporary, as soon as you turn the power off, that's it. it. It would go back to whatever this setting is at. At the bottom you see uh, timers, screen timers, LCD on, LCD off. That controls the secondary display depending on how you're looking at it. If I look down at the um, uh, display below and you'll see me touch here above, you'll see that I've turned off that secondary display and I've turned on the secondary display again. Uh, and let me go into the memory. In the memory area here, you can read the memory. Uh, if I just hit this. Oops, I hit the wrong button to hit the home. So let's try that again here. Memory. And uh, hit the read. And these are the channels or frequencies that are stored uh, into the uh, bit X, which you can do. Um, and by hitting the 2VFO, it says there, that will basically bring up whatever frequencies that you've clicked on. Now the interesting part about this, this shows, uh, okay I'll go back home here, 
this is where a secondary display comes really in handy. So let's say I like to have those memory channels around, whatever the case. Uh, so if I go VFO to mem, oops, uh, yeah, it'd be good if I picked the right one here. Uh, it's memory to VFO. And I do a read here. I'll get up close here. Now you can see in the secondary display, it's exactly what you saw up above here. Um, but now uh, it's dedicated on that display. So anything I do here, uh, say I go to, um, I don't know, uh, 128 for example. I hit the 128 and you see it's 128 there. So if I tell this to go home, um, and I'm going to, as I do home here, I'm just going to go back up to the 7 inch. So you can see um, that it's already gone to 7128. So, th and there they are right now back to the normal displays. So it's kind of nice to have the dual display. It's controllable, you can turn them off, you can dim it independently. Um, and you can view things independently. So you can be looking at uh, you know, a display function, um, or you can be looking at um, uh, some other feature from band scanning. Uh, let me exit here. Uh, or as I showed before, you can be looking at the memory to VFO, do a read, and you can kind of leave that there and then um, use your other display for um, whatever feature that you want to use it for. And so let's go back here. And we showed this step here. Step Just by hitting the step button and then choose what you want. As soon as you choose what you want, uh, the thing will disappear. Down below here, uh, it's a little different. You have to actually hit the... Um, where the hertz is here. Let me get over here. Sorry for the bouncing around, um, but it's right there. So if I hit that, you see the same thing comes up, and I can choose it. And there it is now, 50. And if you look up above here, you notice that it is also um, at 50 right there. So great thing about them, they are synchronized. Anyway, just a quick run, just to show you the two displays, how they uh, can be quite handy to have two of them of various sizes um, and um, these are the Nexium displays the 3.2 and the 7 inch and that's about it for that and then just on the side here you probably saw that running in the background uh, that's just running on a little tablet Android tablet that's called Pocket RX TX that's an Android display uh, program it actually allows you to do two things. It allows you to tune uh, all the various web SDRs around the world, including my own, which is what I'm looking at right now. Um, and it acts just like a regular radio. And you can also tell it to go into the U-BitX mode. In the U-BitX mode, um, you can um, control your U-BitX um, by using this, including transmit and audio. Um, so that's, and there's a new version coming up very shortly made by uh, Thomas, a uh, gentleman in uh, Ham in um, Romania. So hopefully uh, uh, the new version is going to be released soon and uh, we'll even have more improvements. Anyway, that's the Pocket RX DX. Just another thing. And right now it's running Web SDR. I've got everything silenced here so it doesn't uh, conflict with my audio. There you have it. UBITX Transceiver 3.2 running a dual display. 7-inch uh, display. You know, pan back here. Hopefully that gave you an idea of uh, some of the versatility that the uh, UBITX transceiver has developed into uh, with the multiple displays and uh, how you might be able to use them for different purposes. And I believe this is just the beginning. Um, Ian, uh, Dr. Ian Lee, KD8 CEC, is very <laughs> uh, prolific on adding new features and he's very brilliant at uh, at, uh, at doing his coding, so we always look forward to that. Seven trees, you guys have a great day. The UNBWV Claire.